Greetings everyone, this is Connor from Degora TV, and in this video I'm going to be talking about the interview that Todd Howard had with Glixel.com and it was just a brief interview, not too long, um, where a guy was asking him questions, I think it was over Skype, but it's a text interview where, you know, the answers are written and the questions are written down and it gives us some information on the Elder Scrolls 6 and the possible development of that some information as well on Nintendo and Skyrim going over to the Nintendo Switch and if it digs out that and some of the, you know, the behind the scenes of Bethesda gives a little glimpse behind the curtain, if you will. And I just wanted you know, to bring this video to kind of bring it to light because I've not seen a huge amount of discussion about it. Because there's not a huge amount of new information. But the biggest thing to take away is that Todd Howard did get asked about The Elder Scrolls 6 and was asked about The Elder Scrolls series and if he'd like, you know, to make more of them. Obviously he said yes, we know that. And we know that um, The Elder Scrolls 6 is something that's coming. We, we know that uh, there's going to be, it's going to be a little while away yet because at the end of the day, um... We, you know, they told us that we've got three projects, you know, that we've got to be waiting for, which is something that, you know, a, a lot of Elder Scrolls fans, you know, kind of had that idea in the head that, you know, it's, it's a bad thing, you know, to have that wait. But is it though, you know, because, you know, we are getting, you know, a lot of, um, you know, new, getting possibly a new franchise involved, which is a good thing, a very good thing, if you will. And I think that is something that, you know, can really excite a lot of people. And I think at the end of the day, it could be a new franchise for us Bethesda Game Studios fans to kind of really get immersed in, so it's definitely something we can keep our eye on. But anyway, the question about the Elder Scrolls 6 was answered, that was asked was, you're making a new Elder Scrolls game, but you're not going to tell us when. We'll probably see other games first, which was the question, and commenting on the Elder Scrolls 6 says, it's not what you would call a big active project right now. There is some other ones going, we know it's important to our fans, and we need to be careful about setting expectations. It's certainly a game we'll be making one day, I could sit here and explain to you exactly what we want it to be. So... Again, this is elaborating a little bit on what we heard in the Jeff Keighley live show, where Todd Howard pretty much said near enough the same thing. He said that we know what we want the game to be. We're waiting on a bit of new tech, you know, to get that in the right direction. But then, you know, he goes further now, saying that, you know, we could say say exactly what we want it to be, exactly what we know it's going to be. So we know that really pre production's done for Elder Scrolls 6. You know, we know that they've completed that. They've probably completed that probably you know, in the midst of, you know, Fallout 4, you know, while that was creating, you know, Todd Howard probably sat down, probably in the middle of that game, talking about nowhere they wanted to be set, knowing the theme of the game, because he talks about that as well in this interview, saying that that's what you really got, us, that's what really what his job is, you know, he asked us what's the beginning of the game, what's the theme, you know, what's the general story, and, you know, they probably set them places in place, and, you know, there's probably the new mechanics that are going to come into the game, the general story of it as well. But he said it's not a big active project right now, so... That can also tell us, you know, that they may be gone a little bit further from what P. Hines put in his tweet, that they may be doing a little bit of work on it here and there. But, you know, they've got other games coming first. They said that they've got two other big projects, Bethesda-style games, to come out before the Elder Scrolls 6, which, at the end of the day, could, people could be sitting here and say, oh, Elder Scrolls 6 could be 10 years away. But also, the, don't forget to remember that, you know, they are overlapping all of these projects. You know, that Todd Howard also reinstated that in this interview quite strongly. He said it a few times that they're overlapping projects now more than ever. You know, they said they've always done that. You know, they've always worked on projects at roughly at the same time. Best example you probably think of is Oblivion and Fallout 3. Oblivion and Fallout 3 probably made at the same time look pretty similar. Use similar kind of camera styles with the, you know, going up to the face and everything when you're talking to someone. Um, pretty similar games, you know, in the whole aspect of it, the way the, the world works and everything. The leveling is different in the two games, but pretty similar. And you could probably tell that they, those two games overlapped and work from, you know, from time to time. You could tell that was used. And, you know, like, that, that could be doing again because, you know, Elder Scrolls Oblivion and um, Fallout 4, Fallout 3, sorry, was only two years apart, which isn't that long away. And then Skyrim was three years after Fallout 3 and then Fallout 4 came out. And now, as I said, they're working on games that was overlapping during the time of Fallout 4 and, you know, they're overlapping now. And it says that they're working more now more than ever, working harder more than ever now. Then we could maybe expect to hear the, the first one, you know, maybe E3 next year. You know, maybe we could see, you know, the new project, um, get it announced a couple of weeks before E3, like Fallout 4 was. Reason being for that is uh, that, um, you know, with Fallout 4, if they was going to announce the game at E3, you know, it probably would have been leaked before. And the reason being is because, you know, all the banners that you've got to put on E3, all the people who put posters out on Fallout 4, the booth makers and things like that, there's a lot of people who would have found out about Fallout 4 before it came out. Or before it would have been, you know, before the Bethesda um, reveal. Um, or before, you know, even the Bethesda press conference at E3. So, you know, you're trusting a lot of people to keep that secret. Whereas if you take, you know, the safe option and announce it a few weeks before in a video, 
before you let in all those people know, you know, the leak's not going to get out, people are going to, you know, know it's around, and then eagerly wait for it to be, uh, you know, officially revealed and showcased at E3, which, you know, worked very well, and hopefully, you know, they kind of go along that similar style again, so that we can maybe get the game out next year, because, you know, if it's coming along nicely, it'd be two years after Fallout 4, you know, they have been busy, you know, they have done, you know, things like, you know, the Skyrim, a special edition, which was, looks like it was mainly done by the work in the Montreal team, not the team in Maryland. But, you know, the, the main team could be working on, you know, these three projects. Do we know what they are? There's been rumours of a Game of Thrones game, which, you know, I made a video about. There's been rumours of a sci-fi game, I think it was called Starbound was the rumour that was going around. It could be another one. But The Elder Scrolls 6 is in development. You know, it is working. You know, it's not completely active right now. It is on the, the back of the list, if you will, you know, of the games that are kind of coming out, you know, before it. But, you know, we have got other games coming out, and, you know, they're definitely getting along with them. I did like, you know, the fact that, you know, in these interview that... He, you know, was kind of really honest, you know, about what Todd Howard was about the nature of their games, and he, he, he kind of gave it away the when someone when one of the questions asked him about the idea of you know getting the right area of the world, you know, getting the right theme, and he says that he thinks that Skyrim did it best. Todd Howard actually agreed with that, so maybe that's kind of giving it away that maybe he thinks that Skyrim is the best game that they've ever made, which is which is you know like something that I think a lot of people would agree with to be honest with you because Skyrim did really get that right blend between story and world which in my opinion Fallout 4 didn't really get that because I think Fallout 4 was kind of really emphasized to kind of go for the main story because the main story was the most important part of the game it was the best main story I've, I've probably ever seen in a Bethesda game I'll give them that but it was a felt a bit forced and didn't really have that appropriate feel that I was kind of expecting but he was talking a little bit about um, Skyrim on the Nintendo Switch as well, and he says that it's going to be the same on you know the TV and the other screen is not going to be any difference, which is fantastic. Which is something that I think a lot of people who were really looking at the Elder, um, the Elder Scrolls series and the Nintendo Switch could maybe looking to get one to so maybe play Skyrim on the go would be something that'd be really interesting to a lot of people, especially something like me. You know, I'd be definitely interested to you know go to play you know Skyrim on that. And they talked about as well, you know. Um, the Nintendo, also the Nintendo system that they've always wanted to support, you know, all that kind of bullshit. And they also talk a little bit about Fallout VR, which is something that I think a lot of people are kind of, kind of, you know, forgetting about a little bit. Some people have not really been talked about that much. I think that's maybe because, you know, the VR market hasn't really gone into the general mainstream audience yet. And they talked about, you know, the promise of it and um, saying that, you know, the core experience they want it to be Fallout or bring it to VR and, you know, be able to play it appropriately, you know, be able to play the game well, and, you know, it's, it's something that, you know, people are, play, are playable demos at E3 and stuff like that, it did go down very well, and it's something that I think a lot of people, you know, would be anticipating, and probably would something that would send them over the edge if they wanted to buy a VR headset, and I think that, at the end of the day, you know, going into VR could be a good idea for these games, you know, I would definitely like to see, um, you know, an Elder Scrolls game or a Fallout game on VR, you know, Fallout 4 and VR is something that would probably make me go back to the game and definitely give it a go again. It is something that is, that is really immersive and things like that. And I think it would be, you know, really interesting to see how that works out. I'm looking forward to seeing more about that. It could be a little while yet, but definitely look forward to see how it would happen. But um, he also was asked as well in the interview, like the last thing I bring up is about Todd Howard, was that he was asked about, you know, other games, you know, kind of, you know, games like Dark Souls, where, you know, they punish the player, or even The Witcher, you know, with Geralt gets abused and it's all about the world, and it's got kind of a different feeling than Skyrim, you know, where in, in the Elder Scrolls series, you know, with um, Morrowind, you know, in Elder Scrolls 3, you kind of like this, you kind of like this alien in the world, whereas with 4, you kind of like this tourist kind of milling around, and in 5, you are really this legend that's generally lasting in Skyrim, you know, you are the Dragonborn. And he says that, you know, they try to reflect, you know, a lot of what they have in the game back onto the player. And he says that they always feel that, you know, the Witcher in Dark Souls is really good at that. And I think that, you know, it's again, it's honest. And he says that, you know, he was kind of, he got the idea of, you know, having the world reflect back on you. So when he's playing um, the original Deus Ex, when he says that, you know, they're fighting against a guard and the guard kills them. And then they just kind of walk away in a way that it doesn't really affect them. And you don't really get that interaction. So he says that. He has to, you know, really has to, you know, get that in that mindset to really make that up to, you know, for the player, you know, to, is to get the world to kind of give you that feedback. And it's something that in the Elder Scrolls series that we do generally have. And I think a lot of people, you know, would like more, you know, would like more lines to give a bit more dialogue and feedback to it. But I think the fact that the Elder Scrolls series has really done that well, you know, to give you that feedback in the world, especially, you know, when you've done quests and people come up to you and asking about, you know, the things that you've achieved in the game, one of the biggest one that I think has done that is Oblivion. You know, when you're the hero of Kavach and the Britannia and you're the champion of the Imperial Arena, you get all that as well. And I think all in all, you know, 
It's something that we can look forward to if you tell how it's talking about it now to kind of really kick up a gear, you know, in the ne next uh, next Bethesda games, which is something that we've talked about, you know, because that was something that was probably disappointing about Fallout 4. To a lot of people, it was disappointing to me anyway, that aspect that you didn't really feel that important. Not really that important, but you didn't really feel that the world was reacting to you that well. And it's something that, you know, other games have really taken on their stride and really done immensely well. Even games like Far Cry, you know, from people like Ubisoft have done it well. I've heard the Watch Dogs too. People that have played that game have said that it's doing that really well. So it's something that we kind of expect now in games. And Bethesda was kind of the forefront of that for a number of years with, you know, Oblivion, Fallout 3 and Skyrim. And hopefully, you know, they'll be able to take it to another level because, you know, other games like The Witcher and, like you said, Dark Souls have done it better than them. You know, so hopefully we'll see a lot more of that and see kind of a positive reaction from Bethesda in that. So thanks for watching this video, I hope you really enjoyed it, and please make sure you subscribe, follow me on Twitter, leave your comments below what you think about The Elder Scrolls 6 and what you think hope it's going to be, check out all the videos I made about The Elder Scrolls 6 and things like that, read this interview as well, the link to this interview is going to be in the description if you want to talk a little bit, see a little bit more of it, it's talking about you know how Skyrim went into the mainstream audience and things like that, it's a good read, it's a good interview. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys later, goodbye.